on yet? You guys hear me okay? Whew, okay, I'll warn you, I got in from Arizona late yesterday afternoon and I've had more allergy medication and coffee in the last two days than a, a small horse could tolerate. So hopefully I won't go way too fast. But I'm Paul Luce, I'm with Intel. Um, I'm part of the Storage Performance Development Kit. And uh, you know, I don't think I've been at one of these OFA workshops in, I don't know, six or seven years. I, uh, the last time I was here, we had just started the uh, open source Windows NVMe Express driver. I was the chair of that first working group and I'm pretty sure that's still alive under OFA. Um, but uh, a little bit of my background. So what we're gonna do in the next 25, 30 minutes, um, First, talk about what is SPDK. I'm great to hear it in the last talk. Show of hands, how many people already know what SPDK is? All right, I could almost just leave right now. <laughs> I'll stick around though. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about the SPDK, SPDK community. Um, just one slide, I won't bore you too much. But we have, uh, we've spent a lot of time and effort over the last year building our community and our infrastructure to both encourage use of our collateral as well as uh, contributions and collaboration within our community. So I'll give you a little bit of info there. Um, and then we'll talk about use cases and of course our NVMe over fabrics target. So what is SPDK? SPDK is, it's, it's like three things. It's a library or a set of libraries. It's a framework for applications that want to use SPDK but don't necessarily um, have the infrastructure for message passing between cores or uh, asynchronous event processing, that kind of stuff. We kind of had to write that anyway uh, to support the sample applications that we've been writing. Um, but that event framework is available as well. Um, and then lastly, it's uh, a set of applications as well. So it's not just designed for developers to you know, suck in the API and NVMe over Fabric's target is a perfect example, right? You can just go grab the binaries, um, run them, and you're off and running. So it's a little bit of, uh, it's a little bit of everything. All right, I get it way up here because I brought my wrong glasses too. I'm just having a hell of a day. So SPDK architecture, this is more of a sort of a landscape of what SPDK is uh, as opposed to an architecture diagram. And this actually isn't everything. It has grown so much in the last year. Um, if you haven't been out there even a, in a few weeks, um, you probably haven't seen the latest. It just changes and grows um, that quickly, both in depth and breadth. So we continue to explore new usage models um, community members continue to join and come up with new ideas um, and do things with some of these things that we had never thought of. Um, it's just really cool to see it grow. But starting at the top, I won't go through all these boxes uh, just because it would bore everybody and we don't have the time. Um, but at the top, we've got our storage protocols sort of layer. Uh, and this is looking in from the application or looking in from the fabric. Uh, and this is where you can see uh, our applications are implemented. So this is where our NVM over fabrics target is at. Um, we've got an iSCSI target uh, that's pretty much the same thing as the NVMe over Fabrics target, but iSCSI for the protocol. And then you see a few uh, vhost targets as well, a block target and a SCSI target. And I think I've got a usage model slide coming up on that, showing how a lot of CSPs are using our vhost uh, optimizations to get uh, incredible VM densities, uh, much more so than they could uh, without user space uh, SPDK help. All right, and then in the middle, we've got our block device abstraction layer, um, which is very uh, analogous to the kernel um, block device layer. And it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, right? The top end API uh, is generic block access that we've defined, so that's an SPDK API. And then jump into the bottom layer of it, um, we've got different backends um, that anybody can write and or that are already in the library. Um, backends for the block device abstraction layer that take that SPDK API and translate them to a device driver API, right? A user space pulled mode device driver, or in you know the cornerstone of SPDK uh, for drivers is the NVMe Express driver. And then jumping back to the middle is something we've been um, working on and, and promoting a lot lately. This is our, um, our our list of virtual block devices. So a virtual block device in SPDK or a VB dev. Um, is basically like a, uh, like a filter model, right? You can write your own software module, uh, take IOs on the, on the in at the top, spin them out the back end to whatever device you're actually talking to, and intercept um, their responses as well, and do kind of anything you want in between. 
Um, there's a lot more examples than the two that are on this slide, um, but these two are fairly recent uh, logical volumes, which is essentially the equivalent of LVM in the kernel. So this uh, lets you take uh, an NVM Express device that's promoted up through the BDEV layer and carve it up into as many small chunks as you want and present them as if they were their own, v as their own BDEVs. So this is, has a tremendous use in virtualization. So you can share a single device, a bunch, a bunch of different VMs. And then same kind of thing with GPT. We can take a GPT partition and serve that up as a BDEV as well. Um, another one that's in the works right now is uh, encryption. So we've got a crypto uh, VB dev that's uh, up for review right now that will um, fit into that layer. The other reason this layer is really important to a lot of community members is because it's defined on two well-defined APIs, the top end and the back end, and all of this is BSD licensed. So if a company wants to adopt SPDK but add their own secret sauce and not open source it, they can do that through a VB dev and easily maintain their uh, interface with SPDK because those two APIs are reasonably stable in SPDK terms. And then the bottom end is, of course, our, uh, our you know, most stable component, our NVMe um, user space pulled mode device driver. Off to the right, we've got some examples of integration activities that we've done, and there's other modules that don't have a, a real great way to explain how they fit uh, into the big picture. But an example would be the work we've done with RocksDB um, to put a, uh, basically an SPDK backend on RocksDB and get some really significant um, performance advantages. Uh, we've got an integration with Ceph um, and a bunch of other stuff too. Um, and all that is out in the repo, of course. So that's kind of what SPDK is. And then I mentioned we've been working really hard, especially over the last year, on building um, community um, really recognizing that for SPDK to go the next step um, and, uh, and, and, and really grow and become even more popular, we need help from the rest of the world. We just can't start this thing off the way it, uh, it kicked off, whatever, six or seven years ago. Um, it started really as a science project at Intel between a few engineers in the lab. And after a few years, it was decided, uh, let's open source this. So it was pushed out into GitHub. And slowly, people were adopting it and saying, I'd like to do this, I'd like to do that. Um, and we didn't have a very good infrastructure for supporting that. Um, and as it grew in popularity, particularly in PRC, um, we've established all, really all of this in the last year. So we are 100% transparent in everything. So from planning to development, test, our test infrastructure, um, our continuous integration system, our backlog, everything is wide open. So if you haven't been out to spdk.io lately, I'd encourage you to take a look. All right, why are so many people using it? Uh, everybody who raised their hands kind of already know the answer to this. And this is not my favorite slide, but it's a marketing slide that we're sort of forced to use. It tells a story that I think everybody in here already knows. Hard drive progressions over time, latency decreasing, performance increasing, um, you know, really starting with NVMe Express. Uh, the spotlight on kernel components is being the bottleneck in, in the storage stack. And what do we do about that? How do we take advantage of um, this new media when the software in between is, uh, is slowing us down. So, you know, sorry, another marketing slide, but it has some good summary stuff, and we're going to go through a lot of detail on NVMe over fabric target performance uh, in the final slides. But um, some high-level stuff, um, you know, 10x IOPS over the uh, in-kernel target um, with NVMe over fabrics, which is, you know, obviously pretty big. Um, 8x more um, with just the NVMe Express driver, uh, over kernel. Uh, I mentioned our RocksDB integration activity, 50% um, better uh, overall performance there, a um, lot of it, uh, improvement on tail latency, uh, and then you know faster TTM and all the benefits of using a, an open source project. And we've got a lot of folks that are very active in the community. This is just sort of the more recent ones that are showing up on IRC and making contributions and co-presenting with us at various forums. Um, so um, recognize a few of those names. Uh, Hitachi, actually, we just uh, voted in uh, one of the Hitachi engineers as a maintainer. Um, so we've got our first non-Intel maintainer about three months ago, which is pretty cool. Okay, so now some usage models. 
And like I said, SBDK is, is, is so many different things. Um, we could almost spend a whole talk just covering different ways of using SPDK, but I've got some of the more popular ones here. Um, and then, of course, the over fabrics target um, for this group. Okay, the simplest is application acceleration um, with local storage. So basically, you go in and, and modify your application to use the NBM Express pulled mode driver, or in this case, uh, a little bit more than that with RocksDB. Um, and you serve up local storage and you get all the benefits of uh, user space pulled mode driver. Uh, the BDEV layer also um, plays a role in all of these usage models by you know, providing that layer of abstraction between the actual block device and whatever the application is. That really lets you plug and play uh, anything you want from front to back, right? So probably already obvious, but our NBM over fabrics target doesn't require um, NBM Express Media behind it. I mean, it makes obviously sense to do that, but with the BDEV layer in there, you can put anything you want behind it that you want, including going better over the network. And we've got that, I think, on this slide. So remote access to storage. Uh, again, these are components we saw in the, in the bigger diagram um, showing two of the applications, iSCSI target and VMware Fabrics target, um, coming into the BDEV layer, that central block device abstraction layer and then hitting uh, the user space NVMe driver. And as you can see here, you can either, our NVMe driver can either act as an initiator to go out over the fabric and hit remote targets, or it can hit local storage. So you can chain this stuff together um, in a gazillion different ways. And really the same thing for iSCSI. I could actually use the same exact pictures and just replace uh, the one box that says NVMe over fabrics target with iSCSI target. But this one is highlighting, again, that virtual block device capability. And that's what this third party thing is that says uh, third party and then storage services, where you can do encryption, compression, you know, any other value added thing you want to do, including um, some sort of RAID type capability. And there's a few patches out right now that, uh, that promote that and a lot of discussion in the mailing list as well. Okay, and then virtual machine acceleration um, is where, it, this is really all focused around vHost um, and really taking advantage of all the optimizations that came with vHost, but now moving it in not only to user space, but direct user space from the SPDK application um, to the storage service. So uh, we've got lots of presentations and slides up on spdk.io that and the entire deck is just about this. Um, so if you have interest uh, in increasing VM density, um, decreasing latency, and you're already a vHost user, um, this is a great way to do it. We've even got two options. Um, in one option, the application running in the VM requires um, no mo modifications at all. Um, you use the existing um, device drivers. If you want even better performance, we've also got uh, SPDK enabled applications within the VM uh, where you get even more. Okay, and I think I mentioned this already on a couple different slides, but this is just another one showing that capability of uh, taking advantage of the defined APIs in the BDEV layer um, to do your own thing and not have to open source it. Um, and then this shows a little bit more what I mentioned earlier. This path on the back end to local drives um, or that same device driver um, can act as an initiator and go out over uh, the fabric and connect you to targets. All right, so let's look at our target um, in a little bit more detail. So our target, of course, kind of has two sides to it. Um, the left-hand side is the local media side, so this is, of course, local access. Um, our target is completely emulated in software, um, so we've got a BDEV translation layer that's part of the target that takes the emulated NBM Express controller and turns it into our top-end, well-defined BDEV API. Um, so everything in green is part of the target. And then locally, you go down through the same exact stuff that I've already covered, the BDEV layer, um, other virtual block devices, our user space driver, and then local media. And the right-hand side is our uh, transport side, and this is where we use uh, a few of the OFED libraries and why um, when we have these kind of things for SPDK, we always like to have um, consumers of our libraries um, and, and APIs 
come tell us about what they're doing. So we figured you guys might want to see what we're doing, and this is where we're um, consuming the libraries. So right now, what we've got um, up in the repo is RDMA support um, using libiv verbs uh, and the RDMA connection manager. And what we've got work in progress is the stuff in the dotted lines. Um, the first vertical, uh, where um, Broadcom is working with the community to define a, a sort of a de facto standard common set of fiber channel transport APIs, um, and that's all up on GitHub right now. That will become part of SPDK um, to drive uh, other vendors that want to contribute their fiber channel drivers um, to bolt into that API. And that vendor driver, at least the first one for Broadcom, is already up there. Um, what's not up there yet is the fully defined uh, or implemented um, fiber channel common API. And then the other thing we've got going on, which is much later this year, is uh, support for TCP um, as a transport. Okay, so that's what the target application side looks like. The initiator application side, it's essentially the same picture. Um, the initiator is not a, uh, a separate module. Um, it's actually our uh, NVMe Express pulled mode driver um, just talking uh, out the RDMA side instead of to local storage. So we consider that part of our NVMe Express driver library. Okay, so before we look at the uh, over fabrics performance numbers, I wanted to mention just a few things about the, the pulled mode driver itself, because this is where um, a lot of the performance benefit comes from. I'm not a huge fan of how these graphs are laid out, but at least with this huge green, I can come up and remind myself what they actually say. Um, so on the left-hand side, we've got the kernel, and on the right-hand side, SPDK. The dark blue is the number of nanoseconds spent in submission, and the light blue is the number of nanoseconds spent in completion. So without going through all the, the verbiage on the right, um, you can see pretty um, dramatic uh, overhead reduction with SPDK over kernel. And then a word on scaling with the SPDK and Beam Express driver um, over the kernel driver. What this is showing is along the horizontal axis, um, we're adding one SSD at a time uh, and taking performance measurements uh, and then scaling. And you can see the dark blue is uh, the, the Linux kernel numbers that top out, you know, really at two or three SSDs. Um, and uh, SPDK scales incredibly, almost perfectly linearly up to eight SSDs on a single core. Okay, so that's the, the core driver itself. Now let's talk about the target application built on top of SPDK, leveraging that core driver. Again, this is another really funky graph that I didn't invent. Um, and I always have to look at it to remember how to interpret it. Um, essentially, what we're looking at is number of cores uh, and IOPS. So IOPS is the blue bar um, going up and down. And the labeled number on the right uh, is the number of cores. So what we're showing here with this line going from left to right is that SPDK can reach the equivalent amount of IOPS as the kernel does, three cores versus 30. So it's a different way of slicing kind of the same information I mentioned earlier with the scaling, um, just looking at, uh, at pure IOPS. So this is where that number uh, 10x performance improvements come from. It's really more of an efficiency uh, thing than anything, which is important um, in a lot of use cases, you know, particularly like what I mentioned earlier with VM density. All right, another stack bar chart where we're looking at uh, the SPDK host and target versus kernel host and target. These first two on the left is a 4K random read. The two on the right is a 4K random write. This first one is kernel, NBM over fabrics target, and kernel initiator. And the dark blue is local access. The light blue is uh, fabric software overhead. So you can see with, with both kernel components, we're at 11 and 14, uh, or 25. Um, with SPDK on both ends, we're at 14 total, right? seven on each end uh, for reads. And then on writes, you know, it's a, it's a fairly similar story. 44% um, latency in, on reads reduction and 32 on writes. And again, this is with Optane.
All right, and another way of breaking it down, and it's all still kind of the same tests and same information, but this just helps, helps to identify where all these advantages are coming from and what layers um, and, and what SPDK looks like in comparison with everything else in the stack. So you read this one um, as a complete round trip. This is with the SPDK target and the kernel initiator, and then the next one is SPDK target and SPDK initiator. We start at the left-hand side, um, we come down through the stack, we hit the opt-in controller, and then we go up the right-hand side, um, and then we get back up. And I won't go through every single number. You can see pretty much everything fairly obviously. The, the one thing that is hard to spot is the SPDK contribution because it's that tiny little red line, right? So the relative contribution to uh, this overall uh, round-trip latency uh, of the SPDK components is pretty tiny. So this is a 20 microsecond round trip. And then when we put SPDK on both ends, it's almost the same story, um, except we've got a 14 microsecond round trip instead of 20, um, as the SPDK initiator has removed um, the, uh, an additional six seconds of microseconds that came um, out of the kernel side. All right, so that's the, the quick summary of what SPDK is, who's using it, why, um, and I uh, wanted to share a little information with you guys on how the NVMF target looks, what the performance looks like, especially using um, libraries out of this, uh, out of this group. Um, so I hope this was uh, interesting, um, maybe eye-opening in some cases, maybe not, but we have like a few minutes for questions, if anybody has any. <laughs> So I have one, one question. I touched upon that yesterday already. Um, when you deploy SPDK, uh, that SPDK, it always comes together with the DPDK. Is it possible to separate these two somehow different um, yeah, machi there's a, machines? Yeah, um, there's a, an environment abstraction header file where all of the calls that SPDK makes into DBDK, go through an abstraction layer that today is basically a one for one. Um, I'm not sure anybody's actually doing it yet. Um, and one of the things on the to-do list in the community is to build a really lightweight, maybe not even a performant um, type library like DPK, DPDK, so we can test out that interface and make sure that um, that, that works. Um, but um, but yeah, the capability is there. I'm just not sure how frequently it's used. Yeah, my, my point here is that, that you may don't want to have that whole DPDK stuff with you because this, this is a really huge thing. And it is. If you bring it up, it, it is doing stuff you don't want to do on your machine maybe, and you just want to deploy your, your NVMF host, right? Which this is just a tiny library. Yep. But, but, but you come with this big, Completely agree. Big yeah, and, and we only use a tiny bit of what DPDK does. Yeah, but, um, but you could make a version which is not using it at all. Yeah. Um, that, that, that would be helpful. Yep. No, thanks. It was a good question. It's come up a lot, and there's various little activities going on, but nobody is, um, has cared enough to actually do the work, and that's sort of where we're at with this community model and all the work we put into making it possible for anybody to do anything. Um, we just had a request a few weeks ago. Um, we're getting ready to drop uh, a specific OS out of our CI, um, and they said, we, we still use this. We really need this. And the answer was, okay, if you can identify why it doesn't work anymore um, or have the resources to do that and promote and propose a fix, yeah, no problem. But nobody else cares enough, so it's getting dropped. And same thing with, uh, with that environment layer. Header files are there. As soon as it's really important to somebody, it'll get done. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about um, some of the early adopters and what people are doing above the SPDK? I know uh, Bernard presented, you know, some of the stuff he's been doing yeah. in pre presentation yesterday, but other people are, especially the user space, the user space, for, you know, what kind of things are they running on top of it so far? You know, I, um, I'll give you a few, like, really broad strokes that aren't going to be the best answer. Um, I'm actually the newest engineering team member to SPDK. Um, there are some presentations from our last summit from um, companies like Oracle and Fujitsu. Um, there's some um, public articles from uh, Alibaba uh, explaining how they're using it. Um, it's mostly in storage appliances. Um, Nutanix has some good public information about what they're doing. 
um, where it's, you know, it's way behind the scenes. They're building an appliance and, and they're using bits and pieces of it. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the best way I can point you to it. Uh, in, the, in the community, we're typically, of course, just I'm sure like folks are with OFED, we're focused on SPDK. And, and of course, we learn what other people are doing and people come to our summits and talk about it. But, you know, do I know all the details and do they want me to know? Probably not. Do you have any kind of like summit? We do. In fact, if you go to spdk.io, um, and I know I'm running out of time, but we actually have uh, three types of engagements that we have set up. We have a summit that is very much like this. It's presentation style. It's two days long. Our next one is May 15th, I think, this year. Um, we also do the same thing in China yearly. Um, then we have a yearly developer meetup, which is just for folks that are actively contributing to SPDK, where we don't have an agenda. We just say we're all coming together, 20 of us or so, in the same room for two and a half days and get our work done. It's just much more efficient to do it that way. So we do brainstorming, we do whiteboarding, we push patches through, we do all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we, and what we're just starting in May is we're doing labs, like walking through folks that um, don't know how to use SPDK, don't know how to build it, um, a really hands-on structured way of getting them started. So we kind of have a, you know, like a three-pronged thing of summits. But SPDK.io has all the information. All right, thanks everybody.